I don't regret killing him now. That is something else. That This really is. She is. I see why this went viral. And we are going to be discussing the case of Angela Simpson and Terry Neely. This particular case is just disturbing, honestly. But it does kind of scare me. It's a little out there for me. So I had to bring my bunny today. He's going to comfort me. So on August 5th, 2009, around 5 a.m. in the morning, Phoenix Fire Department was called about a burning trash can in the parking lot of the Covenant of Grace Christian Fellowship Church. When firefighters arrived on the scene, there was indeed a trash barrel that was had flames coming out of it. So they quickly put the fire out and inside of this barrel was the dismembered remains of a white male. And because this trash barrel was on the church's property, the police obviously had to notify the church officials about what they had just discovered on their property. And the Phoenix police, when they were reporting on this particular crime, they said this was one of the most heinous crimes they'd ever seen. In order to identify whose remains this was, an autopsy was performed. Luckily, through his fingerprints or what was left of his fingerprints, they were able to identify this man as Terry Neely. Now, Terry Neely was a 46 year old man from Phoenix, Arizona, and he actually lived in an assisted living home uh, in this neighborhood that the church was in. They also found out that Terry required a wheelchair because he was a paraplegic. Um, he had some type of spinal cord injury and he often rode through the neighborhood in his motorized wheelchair. Through the use of security footage, police were able to discover that Terry had actually left his assisted care facility around 8 p.m. on August 2nd. But other than that, they really had no other leads or, you know, any ideas of who could have done this to him. A witness actually came forward and contacted the police about an abandoned wheelchair near an apartment complex close to where Terry actually lived. Obviously, detectives were interested in this abandoned wheelchair because they knew that Terry used one. So they went to this apartment complex where the wheelchair was found and the detectives ended up searching all the apartments in this complex. And in one of the units, that's when they stumbled upon all of this evidence of an extremely heinous crime scene. And inside this particular unit, they found blood stains. They also discovered that the carpet inside had been removed and it didn't seem like anybody was actually living inside that apartment. I believe the more they searched this apartment complex, they were able to locate some of this carpet that had been removed that actually had the blood on it. And that they took a sample of that carpet to take it to the lab to have them run a DNA analysis on it to try and figure out whose blood it was. The blood came back as a match for Terry Neely. And it was shortly after that, that a witness who happened to be the apartment complex's manager really came forward and helped them, you know, with their investigation. And this manager said that he had seen smoke from that specific apartment the police had just searched. It turns out that there was two individuals inside, a woman named Angela Simpson and her friend, a 36 year old man named Edward McFarland who went by the nickname Cracker and they had a City of Phoenix trash can. And if you remember, the same type of trash can was found at the church. So let's talk about Angela Simpson for a second. So Angela Simpson is honestly a scary individual. Uh, yeah, that's an understatement. A <laughs> uh, very disturbing individual. She gives me serial killer vibes. So she was born on November 29th, 1975. And just this case in general does not have a ton of details about it other than a few articles that were written. It's very uh, minimal. It. Very little information. We don't have a ton of backstory on this one. She did not have a great childhood. She was in and out of foster care. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been being physically abused, I believe. She also has a history of mental illness going back to 10 years old. But over the years, she did have four kids. Uh, we don't do we don't really know too much about them. But what we do know is that her mother took care of them. She definitely like made a name for herself on the streets. And she really one of the things she absolutely disliked was snitches and offenders. Prior to, you know, this whole incident, she and Cracker actually would go and find offenders in her area and at yep. one point she actually like broke into one of these offenders houses and scared the shit out of them it's a little dexter vibes you know that's what she thinks is that she's doing you know everybody a favor by taking out these offenders but in 2009 angela was 33 years old she was basically working the streets now how did angela meet terry well terry lived in the same neighborhood and their paths crossed because terry would go you know riding around his wheelchair and he definitely crossed paths with angela a number of times because angela was off offering services 
-hmm. for money. He definitely had, I don't know if for sure he was a police informant. I believe he was, but I think he thought it was a good idea to like kind of get in with Angela and be cool with her mm -hmm. by being like, oh yeah, I know what the cops are up to. They've been raiding, you know, doing stings and stuff on, you know, people like mm. her so i can give you a heads up kind of going back to the timeline when the apartment manager went to angela's apartment to check to see if everything was okay angela actually explained to this apartment manager that she had just transported the body of a man and then she threatened the apartment manager to kill him if he told anyone that's was so crazy that he actually tried to do that for a little while i would be like okay yeah i'll call the police and that's i mean it's pretty much what happened is that the police got this information and they were quickly able to identify Angela. I mean, Angela was, you can just tell she's, she's not worried. She's extremely bold with these actions with this crime. So when the police go to try to track Angela down, they realize that Angela's actually already in jail for an unrelated armed robbery charge. She had actually committed uh, a robbery with Cracker the day after the murder. While she was in jail, detectives brought her in on August 19th, and after asking for a candy bar and a soda, Angela confessed to the murder. And when she told the detectives what had happened, she was extremely calm and articulate and very detailed about that night. In a way that is pretty shocking to see. I've seen this case a lot on TikTok, interview clips, because it's just so wild how she was acting. Let's break down what exactly happened, which this is brutal. So warning. So on the night of August 2nd, 2009, around 8 p.m., Terry was out in his wheelchair and Angela was out as well. And she ended up luring Terry back to her apartment on the 9600 block of North 12th Avenue, promising Terry... And Terry, he had had multiple, you know, conversations with Angela and was a frequent client of hers. They had some sort of relationship to some extent prior to to yes. this night. Angela basically came to the conclusion with Terry that he was a police snitch because he had close ties with law enforcement. And at one point, Terry had allegedly told Angela he actually snitched on a fellow inmate while he was in jail. One mm -hmm. of two things she does not like a snitches and Offenders. And so with Terry, she decided to be the jury, the judge, and the executioner. She decided that you deserve to die, and I'm about to put you through three days of absolute hell. From August 2nd to August 5th, Angela brutally tortured Terry Neely until he finally died. So then finally on August 5th, Angela decided to finally just kill Terry. And that is why, you know, you get serial killer vibes from Angela Simpson because. This is something that a serial killer would do. She seemed to really enjoy this process. There's more to the story than what's out there. I think I read oh, yeah. somewhere that yeah. Terry at one point during some of their encounters said racial, uh, racial slurs mm -hmm. towards her. Either you really, really enjoy this and this is getting you off or there's other reasons for why you're so passionate about murdering somebody in this way. But when police asked her, why, why did you kill Terry? And she said, well, because he was a snitch. The police actually confirmed that he had never worked with the police as an informant. So it could have been a complete lie. Like Terry could have just said that because he was just trying to get close to her because he thought she might like that to have like a, you know, somebody on the inside that knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. But that clearly proved to be a bad move. The police go ahead and arrest her on murder charge. Mr. Cracker was arrested as well for his role in disposing of the body. So a few weeks later on August 27, 2009, a grand jury indicted Angela Simpson on first degree murder, kidnapping and abandonment or concealment of a dead body. She also at this point had the death penalty on the table. So on March 22nd, 2012, Angela Simpson, rather than go into trial trying to fight these charges, she just pleaded guilty to them. And it seemed the reason for doing this was because she was hoping that she would get the death penalty. But that did not happen because on April 2nd, 2012, Judge Paul McMurdy sentenced Angela to natural life in prison for the first degree murder charge and 14 additional years for the other charges. And she'll never be eligible for parole, work release, or any other program that could allow her to leave prison. She actually went and did some interviews with the local news there. In court today, you said uh, you're not here to pretend to be remorseful. Of course not. Why would I do that? Are you remorseful? Not at all. Why? Why would I be? She has some Jody Arias energy to her. The way that she's interviewed, even her voice. Yeah. So calm. And yeah. Very confident in herself. You definitely don't see this often. Normally people are pandering or trying to convince you or... But with Jodi Arias, emotion. she was pleading innocence. Yeah, I know. It's completely different than Jodi Arias, of yeah. course. But their vibe kind of reminds me of each other. I don't regret killing him now. That is something else. 
that this really is she is i see why this went viral i feel bad for terry's family obviously it's extremely mm-hmm. traumatic and yeah. horrible to have that happen to any anybody's mm-hmm. loved one we'll go ahead and wrap up today's episode there hopefully you enjoyed this episode of the mile higher podcast take your mind a mile higher